Hello guys, we are here at the store championships for Netrunner 2015. My name is Steven. And I'm Tim. And we are catching Sasha and Jeremy at the resolution of the winner's bracket. So both of these guys are undefeated going to the top of the, the bracket here and one of them is gonna get knocked down to the loser's bracket and maybe have a chance to make their way back up and play the, in the, the finals. The person that wins this game, more importantly, will go to the grand finals and have to lose twice for them to lose this tournament. Which is insane. It's the beautiful thing about double elimination, I think. I'll tell you what, losing twice at Netrunner whenever you've gone undefeated through the bracket is pretty hard to do. Yeah, Because it's, uh, at that point, you you got to be good and you, your decks have got to be working well. Yeah, you're usually really good and you have to lose twice. It's, 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 it's bad. So we have an Architect trigger here. Yeah, Jeremy, face check an Architect. Now, Architect, a critical piece of ice, Sam. I think we can both agree on this. It has amped up the HB face check uh, a, thousand a thousand times. It used to be HB, eh, it doesn't oh, really it's a matter. Rotator it, okay. Rotator doesn't do anything. It, you know, doesn't. anything else I can click through. I don't care. Architect now is just, ugh, it's so it, brutal. You make that noise in your head, like, ugh, ah. I will do a lot of things to not trigger an architect. Yeah, a lot of things. Like I, <laughs> I'll even install a parasite on it illegally. I well, guess you, not illegally. Not illegal. You can do it, but. <laughs> That's a negative 14 string. <laughs> it doesn't architect. do much. So he's installing in front of his hand, getting a money. Which is important with ETF, engineering the future, that is. It's crazy, man. I, I've been playing with some custom Biox. I've been playing with all sorts of weird stuff. And that single ability, man, HB players the world over have figured out that that is critical. It is hard to deal with. It's real good. And um, Jeremy playing Kit, tell us, uh, you were really monitoring this tournament, being the judge. Tell us how Kit uh, was playing throughout the day. What, what was going on? What was the game plan for Jeremy here? Well, Jeremy's game plan, from what I saw... Uh, is get an opus installed fairly early and then make lots of money. There's a quandary. Uh, and then get a rig out. So there's an opus. Boom. And SMC. Well, you called it there. Got an opus out early and got an SMC, which is the beginning of the rig. Of course, SMC letting you spend two credits, search your deck for anything and install it, and you can do that during any paid ability window. So mm -hmm. very important. I uh, can do that mid-run and never really have to face check anything. With Kit's ability being uh, so awesome, you really just kind of get your code gate breaker and start going. Yeah, it's it's pretty insanely good. Now, um, is Jeremy running vamp in this he deck? He was running vamp in okay, this Okay, that's important to keep in mind. We'll have to take a look at that. Turns back over to Sasha. And uh, Jeremy pimping his click trackers there. Uh, those are Some glad to see trackers. that. Yeah, we do sell those guys. If you're interested in those, then a uh, little self-promotion. Here it is. And Sasha getting just three credits, installing three credits. Yep, that, that's fair, I think. Technically, install two credits equals three. And then Jeremy gains six, runs it. Gains six and trashes the sand sand. Jeremy been down this row before. Now, I, I feel like that's a very common theme that we're going to see with this and almost any kit deck is one run. Yep. Um, and it's usually preceded or followed by with six, six credits. Yeah, so six credits run, six credits run, that kind of thing. Yeah. We have another piece of ice over R&D. So now Jeremy may just take eight here. Yep, that is correct. Well, he did it. Taking eight and Good passing call, back over Steven. to Sasha. The Opus money machine at work. And Jeremy, really a great player, kind of come on the scene here fairly recently. He, uh... He's one of the better players in the store, I think. He's just a machine. He will absolutely destroy you in the correct ways. Starting with Diesel, going to potentially save that SMC for something better, seeing his Gordian in hand. Personal Workshop, installing Gordian on it. And then gaining some money with Magnum Opus. How about Opus? It's I'll tell you what, the stock of Opus has risen. There's been a lot more asset game uh, since NEH and HB, of course, still running the Sand Sands and all that. And it's good to see that there are answers to that kind of a thing. Anarchs typically going to like Imp or something, and it seems like Shapers are moving back towards an Opus economy as opposed to like a prepaid that we've seen. And there's Vitruvius Boom. coming right out of hand, and, and you don't hate seeing that as the runner. No. That's the least uh, troubling thing. And when you're playing HB Fast Advance, I'll tell you what, one thing that you realize is that your agendas don't do anything. They're yep. just points. Uh, we've all triggered Accelerator Beta Test, about two times, uh, <laughs> and uh, once you dump about three agendas into the garbage twice in a row, you stop doing it forever. 
I don't know about that. I, I trigger uh, <laughs> quite a few ABTs in my day. If if you're behind, is certainly a way to catch up. I'll say that. But the odds on that card, as good as they sound, never quite work out. I mean, it also depends on deck construction, what you've seen so far, and if you have a Jackson installed. I swear I could have three pieces of ice left in my deck, and it would hit nothing but agendas. Or I guess the opposite of that would be the correct comparison. Yeah. I <laughs> see the Jackson <laughs> Howard. Double Jackson there. I'm going to use it. Getting a Jackson, a Biotic, and something I did not see. Sasha shuffling him up. And gaining four. Up two points, but look at the money that Jeremy has, and especially whenever you know that the uh, vamp is looming. I assume that Sasha probably knows that by now. This deck, uh, Kit Vamp, has kind of seen some play in the past few months. So yeah, it's been a it's been a real deck for a while. I think I think you probably expect it out of out of Kit, at least a one of. Mm -hmm. And uh, is he going to be able to defend against it? I mean, Quandry obviously not doing much, but definitely protecting that second ice. SMC being on the board, I mean, it's kind of available whenever Jeremy wants it. Yeah, it's Jeremy is just setting up right now, I think. And it looks like Sasha scores again. Is it a domestic sleepers? It looks like domestic sleepers, yep. That's going to put Archer online, and Sasha kind of making the deck his own with this, uh, this piece. He's a big fan of domestic sleepers, Archer which brings a, a new kind of threat to these HP fast advanced decks. A lot of players not really into those cards. Uh, mm -hmm. Sasha, definitely a big believer. And it's a very good question. Is now the right time for Archer? And there's a lot of answers. You know, on the one hand, you've got David. Uh, you've got a lot, of, a lot of Fims running around. On the other hand, if it's, not be, if it's not expected, then, man, it can really light a runner deck on fire. It's really hard to justify it. Against Shaper, though. Yeah, like, oh, against Shaper, it's just hard to res. Like, I mean, oh, I'll just go get the Sharpshooter and pay two. <laughs> Shaper doesn't face check anything. They, they, they face check, and for those at home, yeah. they can't see. I'm making quotation marks on my fingers. So, <laughs> uh, they face check, and then they get to see what it is before they get their tool. Yeah. Which is a bummer. For the corporation, that is. It's awesome for Shaper. Yeah, it's awesome for Shapers. It can be a really frustrating feeling trying to bluff out stuff or trying to stick ice whenever there's SMC and money on the board. You just, you can't res anything, but if you don't res anything, then it stays there forever. So yeah. you're really in a tough spot. And I saw that vamp taking six, Jeremy. I feel like Jeremy here is looking for some MU. He's making some money is what he's doing. Right. He's also been drawing quite a bit. Yeah. Now, Feedback filter discarded. What? <laughs> you have to look too at Sasha. Uh, not see that's the thing about HP fast advance too. Like, I think Jeremy's okay if Sasha wants to score all of his agendas out of hand with Biotic, because like that takes so much money and so much time to draw into and do. There's not a server that's putting any kind of pressure on Jeremy to check things or to to get his you know his runs going. So <laughs> he can sit here and gain money indefinitely, build this beautiful rig and then just run centrals until he wins. So Sasha's going to have to find a way to start putting some pressure on him to act. And I don't know, because his Gordian's coming out soon. As soon as he wants it. As soon as he wants it. And I think you're right. He is looking for that MU. He's going to run HQ. And looks like he's going to... Overwrite the SMC. Did he just overwrite the SMC straight up? Huh? Yep. Didn't even use it. He doesn't really need anything else. I imagine he's going to fim this Ichi. Yeah, that's a good point. Just clicking and letting the trace go? Uh, that's fair. And it's not much of a trace. He's going to access Cyberdex. <laughs> Purges it, Jeremy. He's like, ah, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, whatever. Here's IQ, another Sasha favorite. It's a good card, I think. Yeah, it is um, really good. I mean, it's not the greatest against Yogg, but <laughs> if, if you're not running cerebral imaging or anything like that, yeah, you can. It's a it's a really good piece of ice because you can really, if you can, if you know how to work it, it does it does work. Uh, you know, going down to like two cards or so whenever the runner is starting to get frisky and making some runs, getting it at a discount, and then drawing up to five and staying there. Makes it a nice, big old five-strength code gate, which 
has never been easy to break. No. Except maybe by a kid who's probably running Torch. Right. Um, it's also, I think, really good against Otman. Yeah. It's like, oh, I put an Otman at four. Well, I'll keep five or three or two cards yep. in my hand. Yeah. And anything that hates on Otman is probably good for the meta, ultimately. Even though Otman's not really having much of a presence right now, that card has been so terrifying in the past that uh, it still gives me the the willies. <laughs> it keeps you I think night, about it, yeah. Some night sweats. It's like, man, they're running everywhere and I can't res ice <laughs> They're paying stop three them. to break the server. <laughs> now, stop. <laughs> We've all been there before. We've been there. Like, oh, they have a Desperado and Data Sucker. Yeah, my ice is dead and... <laughs> and I have 17 pieces of ice that are four string. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll all install of the good this ice is four string. Yeah. <laughs> all right, there's the vamp. vamp. Slap down. Slap. Ban one. They probably click through the programs and take the trace. Could also just install the fim here, which it looks like he might yep. be doing, yeah. And he's gonna fim. Ooh, the remote ice. Wow. Yeah, he's fim in the Ichi. Jeremy says, nah. I want it. And then he pays three. <laughs> cards owed. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, too many cards in hand. And now deciding if he's going to res anything, not going to do it. So you're going to steal nine credits. Click two, going to, or click, sorry, two, going to shake the tag. And then gain in four. So the economic advantage continues yeah. uh, for Jeremy. And he can do that. Now, I don't know if he can recur that very much. I don't know how this deck operates, what it looks like. I think that he's running same old thing. Yeah. And that's about it. That makes that makes all the sense. Sasha installing, gain us some money. First click, going to run that or remote. Gain six and then run there. Yeah, saying. gain six and run the remote. Probably... I don't know what he's going to take a peek at. Maybe a Sansan, San, Adonis. I imagine it's a Sansan San or an Adonis. It's kind or of an Eve. It's really interesting because Sasha's on such low money. It's not. He's going to have a hard time getting a Sansan San online this entire game. Yeah. Once ever that vamp hits, it's really hard to get back up. Well, there's an Eli. That's not a bad, uh, bad start. And there's the Eve campaign. Do you even res it or do you even I think you trash, trash it. it? You're already there. Yeah, you do. You just don't want him to have that in a little bit. Yeah. I, you know, a good part of me wants the corp to pay five and then I go trash it because that's a, a much better, much better exchange. But if very difficult with opportunity costs as they are, you're in the server already. It's hard to leave it. And he's going to run. Breaks the Eli. And Jeremy just controlling the remotes here. Relentless. It's Jackson, yep. and it gets trashed. That is the correct thing to do, I think, in Jeremy's shoes here. Now, I, I would say that Jeremy has gained control of this game. Yes. He is in control. He's got an <coughs> RD interface about to come down the pipe. He breaks Architect for three. Uh, it looks pretty solid for, for right four, now. For four, right? Or well, he's got Gordian. Gordian on it, yeah. Depends on if that ice comes up or not. It's hard to see with his black sleeves. Maybe that's but Sasha's plan. Maybe. He's like, I'm going to make that's sure that's on the black side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Saul's up over top of the Eli and gains some credits. And Ooh, a leg work. Jeremy draws into leg work. And he's going to gain six, I imagine. Now, let's talk about a card that is great. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to do some work and here in just a second, work. too. I, I think Jeremy's going to use it. Sasha's just been holding for so long. He's been low on money, drawing cards. Probably hold on to at least one agenda, maybe two. Looks like two from what I can see from here. And he's kind of trying to build a remote here, at least to make it a little more taxing for Jeremy to control these assets. The problem is that, that Eli can be clicked through for that remote. If that was anything else. All right, Sasha goes over HQ. Almost has an uncanny understanding that the legwork could be near. Could also be worried about uh, Vamp, and that's not going to stop Jeremy. He's going to gain six, and then legwork. 
knowing full well that whatever it is that pops up on that ice, he will be able to break because of Kit's ability. Immediately turn into a code gate. I don't feel like Sasha's happy right now. No, and I feel like he just put an archer up there. But it doesn't matter. But he, now he's, yeah, he knows that it just does not <coughs> matter. And uh, this is the troubling position to be in. Kit really, really coming into her own, I think, this season, it seems. Do you think that Kit should have that reduced influence? Well, Jeremy is in the uh, winner's bracket finals, so I'd be reluctant to change too much. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, no. I think he may have just missed some agendas there. I think he missed two agendas there. Which is a bummer for Jeremy. Wow. And Sa awesome for Sasha. Yeah, Sasha has to feel great after that. We've all been there before. We have been. <laughs> it's just the best feeling in the world. Yeah, about 90% of the time they hit every agenda. And you're just and like, then... man, there's four points down the drain. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they missed it. Oh, they missed it. They oh, missed they it. missed it again. <laughs> yeah. Life is good. Sasha's doing his thinking pose. Yeah, he's got his thinking. Now, Sasha is a player that is very capable of digging himself out of holes and i've seen him do it i don't yeah i don't know how i don't know how he does it so well uh especially using kind of a by the numbers hb deck right there's not a lot of tricks here no. there's not a lot of maneuvering you can't it's not like an any h deck where you you happen to you know find your scorch in time and land the mid seasons that kind of turnaround uh if you're losing the economy game then you're just kind of losing it yeah and <laughs> HB doesn't have a lot of ways to dig. Yeah, it's it's true. But he does it. Mm -hmm. That's why he's here. That's why we call him the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha the Shovel Freeman. Man, that is a, a pretty cool title, actually. I might have to use that. Why do they call you the shovel? I don't think he's going to enjoy the shovel. I think Sasha might want to... I think he'll be fine with it. thrilling one. Really thinking about this one too. I mean, this is the these these are the turns that are going to decide the rest of the game. But isn't that every turn though? <laughs> no. Install, and he's going to gain some credits. Classic HB play. Jeremy unfazed. All right, gaining some money. That R and D interface should have installed. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You sure? Whoa. I bet he'll catch it in a minute. That's important. And he's running the remote. So gains two and runs the remote. There's the archer. Domestic sleepers goes down. At this point, just kind of a money drain, honestly. I mean, it's a pretty nice piece of ice to have to break. Yeah. It's still costing Gordian seven money. Costing me, it looks like. All right, and he clicks through the Eli, so that's going to get him an accelerated beta test, making it the hard way. And that's a bit of a turnaround there. So now Sasha back on top of the economy game, has a pretty well-established server over there on the remote. Could potentially bluff an asset here. If he gets Jeremy to bite on this to gain six and go in, that's looking good for him. He can't get through if he gains six, though. Ah, uh, that's true. This is what we call a scoring window. That's true. Yeah, I think it's <clears> here. <throat> now, I think that Sasha had an... Uh, NAPD in his hand. Yep. And I wish that that was the first agenda that he installed there. To bait mm. it and then just be the worst. That would have been tough. Yeah. It's hard once you get... A lot of times, sometimes you can like uh, do those accelerated beta tests and put one advancement on them as well. That's a, a, the old trick too where it's like, oh man, I'll never have enough to get that NAPD. And then you just boom it out and you still have one click left the next turn. And you trigger it. So there, and then you trigger it, and then you install Jackson. <laughs> All right, install for two, gains one, so it only costs him one, and then he gains a couple credits. All right, interface is out. Jeremy draws, so... Ooh, NT. So Sasha misses uh, an ability to score there. Probably didn't have an agenda outside of NAPD, but down there. And Jeremy back to eight credits, man. And then install... Credit, and credit. credit, credit. Both of these players, economies are roaring. Torch in hand for Jeremy. He's thinking, man, that looks a lot better with Archer. 
I don't know what the, he's thinking, but the, I assume that. The thing about Archer, though, is there's another ice past it now, so it's no longer going to be a code game. That is true. Unless it's another Archer. Oh, no. That would be terrifying. I think R&D looks pretty solid here. Mm -hmm. And he's going to gain some money and go to R&D. There's Victor. 2.0, right? Yeah, it's 2, yep. I love Victor 2. God, it's the worst. Having to break that thing and then having to basically jack out. Oh, no, he's going to break it with Fem. He's a card. And probably looking at NAPD or not. He's trashing. What's he trashing? Yep. Adonis. He's got the Adonis. Yeah, okay. I think that's smart. And there's Chrissium Grid. And that is the upgrade that he accessed. Mm -hmm. Really not going to have much of an impact this game, I don't think, if any. Uh, if Jeremy plays like a Maker's Eye. That's true. Yeah. Or an indexing. Good point. But what shaper runs those cards? <laughs> yeah. Ha <laughs> Pitch posh. Man, Sasha's looking good here, Tim. He I, he he stabilized. I feel this feels very stable and if this is an agenda, I feel really stable. Look at the way that look at all these pieces of ice. There aside from the quandary, there's not a single piece of ice that I want to break. It's just so expensive. Yep. Uh credit hedge fund credit for Sasha there. He's building these taxing servers, and this is classic Netrunner here on the corp side of things. This is just Get money, build servers, just money and Scourge servers, in this. and astrolabes and memory finally. And I think I think engineering the future has been worth about 10, 11 credits so far. What an ID! Uh, Oof, more than that, right? You think Maybe. more? Because I mean, each piece of he, he's only installed more than one piece of ice in one turn, right? The opening turn. Yeah. You think it's been 12 turns so far? 13? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. <I> do. <laughs> yeah. And then each of those upgrades, and then the agendas he scored with biotics. Torch. Torch going on. Talk about a card that I ragged on in the beginning and still rag on today. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kit certainly loves it. Kit is about the only place that I love it. Yeah, Big Code Gate's kind of not traditionally been a huge problem. It's typically been the quandaries and the enigmas. Just kind of... I will tell you that it's frustrating whenever you have like Lotus Field and uh, Victor 2.0. Victor 2, yeah. And even IQ at 5 can be super annoying. I mean, th this is why you don't see Yogg so much anymore. Yeah. In Azuma. In Azuma, yeah. It's actually a big proponent of Inazuma, but I think he's flopped those out to make room for the archers. And drawn to start the turn. Looks like a Gillahans he just drew. Or Gillahans, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sasha loves that card, and I love it too. You can throw it down in this remote right here and not care either way. It's it's just a really good card in an ATF, I think. Install, install game three. Install game three, yeah. Four credit turns with installs. I hope that's the Gillahans. It. It probably, man, this is a cool play. Let's see what it is. This important moment. Jeremy low on money here. Definite scoring window. Oh, he's going to scavenge in hand. He might move that fim over. Just scanning eight. Just scanning eight. He, he came to terms. Yeah, he's just going to get it. And that's the NAPD. Well, you can't, you can't hate that. No. As the runner. Anytime an NAPD is scored by the corp, it's... All right. Paid a lot for it. I will say ETF at four points is way scarier than at two. Yeah. Way scarier. Oh, yeah. Because now that you know Sasha's running domestic sleepers, this could be just a couple of, couple of turns away. And Jeremy's going to run R&D, accessing two cards. Scores the first one. Looks like an NAPD paying four. I hate that card. And nothing on the second. So at this point, he could lock down R&D and hope that Sasha does not have uh, the game-winning points in hand. Which is not likely. It's not likely. He probably has another one in hand. And there it is. Install and gain two. That looks like a Gia hands. And man, Archer paying off for Sasha here. And we, we have one fresh card. Oh, Sansan. And that's going to get the old Gia out. 
It's all Vance Vance. Ugh. Now we have an issue. Does he have the agendas in hand? We know Jeremy Noni's got two biotics in hand. And so the question is, where do you go? The thing about Sand Sand that's so brutal is you only have to pay for it once. Yep. It's wickedly good mm. like that. And, and Jeremy may just go R&D here, try to, try to score out. Scores one. Scores one. Oh, oh that's my game. goodness. There it Whoa. is off R&D. And Boom. I would love to know if Sasha had it in hand. I would love we'll, to know. We'll never know. We'll never know. Like a good poker player, we'll never know. So, uh, j wow. Wow, man. Crazy. So, Jeremy going to the finals. He's going to have to be defeated twice to not uh, walk away with this thing. Sasha's going down to the loser's bracket where he will face off with the uh, champion of the loser's bracket to see who makes it to the finals. The grand finals, yeah. as they say. Tim, what Steven, do you think? I think that was a good game. Uh, it was fairly classic Netrunner, I feel like. The the runner got, got a rig, or a, a pseudo rig because it's a kit. Yep. Uh, made money, and then the corporation just scored agendas. Um, with a re It was a real server. Um, well, let's not just... count Sasha out yet. Yeah, yeah. I'll say that. We'll be back with another game from this series. Thanks, guys, for watching. See you guys, Ryan.